Hi, good day. My name is Fahad, and today I'll be teaching you a little about ATP generation in migratory birds versus birds that rarely fly. So I'll give a brief introduction on what is ATP. So ATP, adenosine triphosphate, this is the energy currency of the cell in the form of a molecule essential to cell life. It contains a carbon backbone tree phosphate attached. It has high electron density between oxygen and phosphorus and has a high potential energy. Next is a synopsis. This is basically how my group and myself came up with the idea for this presentation. It is as follows. A group of obsessed biochemians went exploring as they went to hunt for a new biochem adventure. They eventually ended up in the zoo. Upon gazing at domestic fowls, lazy birds, and the birds that can fly great distances, Biochem Sharice had a light bulb idea. She decided to take the group on an ATP adventure, investigating the generation of ATP in migratory birds versus birds that rarely fly, lazy birds. In spite of having tons of knowledge on ATP, these biochemians engrossed themselves in directing their focus solely on major topics of ATP. The group rushes to their laboratory to investigate everything they now know about ATP and compare its generation in migratory birds versus birds that rarely fly. They then created a PowerPoint presentation to show off their findings. Now the abstract. Phosphocarotin link to ATP and ATP generation in migratory birds versus birds that rarely fly. ATP, an energy currency essential for cell life, involved in cellular respiration, aerobic and anaerobic, which varies in production depending on the different fates of pyruvate. ATP is a carbon backbone with three phosphates attached, high electron density and high potential energy. Hydrolysis liberates a phosphate group converting ATP to ADP, which is a reversible reaction. ATP is generated from carbohydrate metabolism, example in glycolysis. Phosphocarotin, which produces muscular energy for contraction, ensures the ability of ATP. It is made in the body by amino acids and obtained by meat consumption. Keratin kinase catalyzes the reaction between ADP and phosphocarotin to produce ATP and keratin. In ATP generation, keratin phosphate's importance is to ensure maximum ability to work. In both migratory birds and birds that rarely fly, there is an ATP generation when migratory birds alone during the migrating season, glycogen in the liver and blood glucose level increases. Energy consumption is thus 4 to 10 times of resting metabolism. Demand of efficiency of flight muscle is high, therefore in migrating birds, more ATP would be produced as more glucose is broken down to provide energy and phosphocarotene is important to ensure av availability of the ATP. This structure or ATP is responsible for giving migratory birds and non-migratory birds the energy required for them to fly. This diagram shows the breakdown of ATP to yield ADP with 7.3 kilocalories per mole of energy. The following shows ATP to ATP, which is a reversible reaction. In ATP cell respiration, there are three processes. The first process, the metabolic pathway. The second process, this is where organic compounds are respiratory substrates oxidized producing energy, carbohydrate, lipids and proteins. And the last process, this is where ATP is the energy used for cell respiration. We can see here that cell respiration takes place in three stages. Glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transfer system. This picture shows cell respiration in the mitochondria. Continuous cell respiration, the fate of pyruvate. It is dependent on oxygen availability and can defend products. Then the types of respiration. There is aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. The upcoming slides will explain aerobic and anaerobic respiration and their processes. Now we come across phosphocarotene, which is the partner of ATP and also produces muscular energy in the body. In continuation, phosphocarotene, it forms naturally in the body 
and 95% is stored within muscle cells. Its sources are found in amino acids and in consumption of meat. It can be noted that phosphocarotin supplies the muscles with a free phosphate molecule which is added to ADP to make ATP when ATP levels are low in the muscles. This shows a link between ATP and phosphocarotin which is applicable to birds that require immediate energy for muscle contraction in order to take off. It is found that in birds that travel long distances, that glycolysis is uninhibited which allow a flow of ATP for travel as compared to birds that travel short distances. There is anaerobic glycolysis occurring and thus little energy is produced. So how are they linked? ATP and phosphocarotin are in equilibrium within the cell. This reaction is catalyzed by keratin kinase, which is an enzyme that allows the transfer of a phosphate group from a high energy donor, as seen in the enzymatic reaction below. The following slides will further explain phosphocarotin and ATP generation. Evidence from studies. According to the article, glycolysis activity in flight muscles of birds according to their physiological function, an experiment model in vitro to study aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis activity separately by David Melendez, Patricia de Paz Luga, and Enrique Melendez Javier assessed the activity of the entire glycolysis in tissue extracts. This allowed for the determination of aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis activity separately. Glycolysis activity was measured in pectoral and supraporacoideous muscles of the home pigeon and the domestic fowl. Muscles supporting different aspects of flight representative models of two kinds of basic movement endurance and sprint. Evidence from studies continued. The results obtained show that in type 1 red fibers, glucose produced a high glycolytic activity while it was a poor substrate for type 2b white fibers. White fibers however attained its maximum glycolytic activity with phosphorylated glucose as substrate used for short fast flights in the fall compared with low glycolysis activity with glucose. While the full red muscle is a typical case of endurance machinery which supports the regular sustained flight of birds with a 100% content of type 1 fibers. These results demonstrated validity of the experimental system as a method of, for assaying the two kinds of glycolytic activity in tissues. Continuation it was found that the supracoracoideous muscle is very anaerobic in both species which is consistent with their physiological function of supporting the wing upstroke. The fowl pectoral exhibited the highest anaerobic activity, even higher than in the fowl supracoracoideus which is indeed very high, 3.7 times more than in the pigeon. Consequently, the flight, if the fall is very short and quick, based on continuous wing upstrokes, it is likely the action of taking off but maintained for a longer time and so the metabolism to support this must be a very high anaerobic activity. The following two slides are clips made on non-migratory and migratory birds found at the Emperor Valley Zoo, Port of Spain, Trinidad.
Hi, I'm Mikey in Magatory Bird. My ATV animation allows me to gain all the energy I need to fly long distances. Hi, I'm Rory. Although I'm a bit lazy, I also have an ATP generation that gains me energy. Okay guys, we have come to the end of our presentation. Let's wrap it up. So what did you learn today? Migratory birds must meet the high energy demands of long flight, thus they rely exclusively on their body energy stores. Glycogen is stored in liver and blood glucose levels are increased. This is seen in type 1 red fibers, aerobic glycolysis. Non-migratory birds contain type 2b white fibers, anaerobic glycolysis. This maximizes phosphorylated glucose as a substrate for short fast flights. Energy consumption is thus 4 to 10 times of resting metabolisms for migratory birds. The demand of efficiency of flight muscle is high and therefore their physiological adaptation muscle types explain why these birds can accomplish such an endurance performance while fasting and so they maximize the use of triglycerides. Lipids are believed to be the best fuel to be stored for migratory birds, primarily because of their high energy densities. Thank you and I hope that this presentation was educational and that you have learned something new.